what to look for when buying a digital piano. Uh, I'm with Northside Music Company. My name is Milo Mills. We have a lot of different di digital pianos. Uh, many stores have different brands, and it can get confusing. Um, there are two basic things when you're looking at a digital piano you want to look at. Number one is the electronics. These are all electronic instruments. They have recordings of real pianos in them as, long, as well as recordings of lots of other things. Number two is the keyboards. The cheapest, what they call a digital piano, I have a hard time saying that they're digital pianos. You can go to some places and for seven or eight or nine hundred dollars buy something they call a digital piano. Usually it's a spring-loaded plastic key bed uh, with not very many levels of sensitivity, poor recordings, poor instrument. What you get as you spend more money is better electronics and better keyboards. The keyboards change, first of all, in how mechanically they work. Uh, the cheapest ones are just plain plastic keyboards with springs, as I mentioned. Sometimes they, they hot glue gun a chunk of metal up underneath it to make it feel heavy. But the better ones have escapements, pieces in them that move independently of the key to make it feel like a piano action. The very best of them uh, actually have full piano actions on them. And then there's an intermediate level. M many companies, as you get into their better digital pianos, have things like this. This is an action out of one of our uh, Kawai pianos, but it's a real piano key, a wooden piano key, like out of a real piano. This is nice primarily because pianos are percussive instruments. You, you pound on them. And so if I, if I take a plastic keyboard, especially one of the cheaper ones, and I pound on it, on the, especially some of the cheapest ones, that's not good. That'll break them. And when you get into the wooden keyboards, you think about an old piano. You can take an old piano, a junk piano, and pound on it day in and day out for a long time, and it takes it. It's designed to handle the energy and turn it into sound. And you want your digital piano to do the same thing. If I get excited and I play a, a, an energetic song, I pound on the keyboard, you don't want it to break or wear out. Uh, so that's some place where the wooden keys last longer. If you're a church, uh, and you want it to last more than 10 years, uh, again, a wooden keyboard is a smart step. Um, beyond the key beds, electronics. You can go out to Walmart and for $200 buy a, a portable keyboard that has 200 sounds in it and 100 different rhythms in it. So obviously, the electronics doesn't sound, cost that much. What you're paying for as you get into more expensive digital pianos is better computers, better memory, better speakers and amplifiers, and eventually you're also paying for more effects. There is a basic digital piano that usually has between five and ten voices on it, and then there's something they call an ensemble, which means it has usually many more voices, sometimes several hundred, and it'll have drum machines and automatic accompaniments. I would suggest that the ensembles are fun. They have lots of different things they do, but if you're starting out, you should probably not buy one because you need to learn how to play. <laughs> and if you have an ensemble, they're fun, they do a lot of things, but you tend to sit at it, play all the drum machines, listen to the accompaniments, and go, wow, that was cool, and you didn't learn how to play. You need to go back to the basics, learn to play the instrument. Once you have some knowledge of how to use an instrument, you start using the ensemble, and it's a lot of fun. It adds to what you're doing, and, and it makes it an enjoyable, enjoyable experience. But before you get to that point, it's a detractor. Uh, there are several different companies that offer learning systems. Uh, in the same way that you can get on the internet and learn how to play the digital piano, or any piano, uh, probably it depends on you. I know, for instance, that in learning things, I'm a procrastinator. If I get a book that I'm teaching myself and, and try to learn how to play it, I'll be up forever going, oh, I'll get to that tomorrow, I really need to go wash the dishes. If I'm paying a teacher my own money and I'm supposed to show up next week and show them what I learned, it pushes me, it makes me sit and learn. So that's kind of separate from digital pianos. But um, Northside Music Company in Lafayette, Indiana, we have a bunch of different brands. This is a Galileo, we have Kawais, we have there's a Roland and uh, all sorts of things here. 
Um, if you'd like to look at stuff, give us a call, stop by. Uh, we're on the internet at www.northsidemusic.com. Thanks for listening.